Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Welcome to worship this fourth weekend of Lent. So tonight's theme in our Guided to the Cross series, we'll be looking at the theme of trust throughout our liturgy and through our message time. We'll be talking about what does it mean to trust and what does it look like and where do we place our trust. So that will be uh, what we'll be talking about. You'll you'll hear that throughout the liturgy and the confession and absolution and then also during our message time. So you may remain seated for our opening hymn, hymn number 435, Come to Calvary's Holy Mountain. Congregation, please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We place our trust in many things, and in many people, yet often that trust is misplaced. Things do not work out as we plan, and people may fail us. Where do we place our trust? Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your paths straight. How do we know that the Lord can be trusted? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? God sent his son to suffer and to die on the cross for the sake of our salvation, In him we place our trust, and he will never fail us. Let us then confess our sins to God and ask for his forgiveness. Almighty God, you have called us to trust in you and to acknowledge you in all our ways. Yet we often fail to trust you as we should. We would rather acknowledge our own desires instead of your will. 
we do not love others as we should, we follow the temptations of the world around us instead of walking in your ways. Have mercy on us and forgive us our sins. The Apostle Paul wrote, the saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And God has had mercy on us and sent his son to be our savior. I announce to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, lead us to walk in your ways and to trust in you in all things. The Lord be with you. Let us pray the collect of the day together. Almighty God, we place our trust in friends and family, in political leaders and authority figures. Yet sometimes we are disappointed by those in whom we trust. Sometimes our trust is misplaced. We trust in you for our eternal salvation through faith in Jesus our Savior. Help us by your spirit to trust in you daily in all things and to turn with you in prayer and praise in all circumstances of our lives. You have sent your son to be our savior and you will never fail us. Set his cross always before us to guide us in trusting you. Hear our prayer and accept our praise in Jesus' name, amen. Congregation may be seated for the readings. Our Old Testament reading that greets us tonight is from Proverbs, the third chapter. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading that greets us is from 1 Timothy, the first chapter. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I receive mercy for this reason, that in me as the foremost Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 19th chapter. <clears throat> a jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. And when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Lord. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the message. <clears throat> Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, abounding in anger and abounding in steadfast love. May the words of my heart and my mouth and meditations be acceptable to you, O Lord, in your sight. Grace, mercy, and peace to you in Jesus. Amen. We continue our Guided to the Cross worship series tonight for Lent, looking at how we are guided to trust this Lenten season. In 21st century America, trust is a difficult thing for us these days. We've become accustomed to scam artists, scammers, scamming telemarketers, spam emailers, and even our debit card information is stolen by the scammers who take the information from us at the gas pump. Trust has become such a bad thing that we tend not to trust anyone or anyone anymore with anything. <clears throat> We question every, everything and every request. We doubt any and every claim, so it's no wonder that we have difficulty trusting the Bible. 
we have difficulty believing what Jesus says to us about his salvation through the cross. It sounds counterintuitive at first that someone dies to bring life. But the more we come to know our God, and the more we come to know our Savior, the more it makes sense. We all acknowledge, at least as believers, the truth of our sins, that we have disobeyed God, and that it is something that, as believers, we cannot dispute. It has happened, and we are sorry for what we have done, or not done, or said, and have, or should not have said, or maybe the things that we should have said, but we didn't. The other truth that we know as believers is that someone has to pay for those sins that we have committed. There is a penalty for our sins, and that penalty is death. Paul wrote in Romans, for the wages of sin is death. We know the Bible to be true and therefore trustworthy, and St. Paul assures us all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching for reproof and for correction and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete and equipped for every good work. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, we trust what the Bible says. So it only stands to reason that we trust what Jesus says. When he said, I came that they may have life and they may have it abundantly from John chapter 10. And we trust that he brings life. Christ said, the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. And we put our trust in those reassuring words. During that first Holy Week, Jesus was put before Pilate to be judged by him. And in that hour long, hours long trial, Pilate asked him, are you a king? Jesus said, you say that I am king. It is for this purpose that I was born. For this purpose I have come into the world to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to my voice. Jesus makes it evident that the path that he has taken by God's design is the path of truth, the path of salvation found in his kingship. There is no other truth to listen to. Christ also said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. At his birth in Bethlehem, the angel declared truth, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Jesus Shortly before he raises Lazarus, says to his dear friend Martha, in plain and uncertain terms, whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live, and everyone who lives and believe in me shall never die. Then he says, Martha, do you believe this? And she says, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world to save us from our sins. One of the questions before us tonight is do you and I, as brothers and sisters, as disciples of Christ, do we respond as trustingly as Martha did in that moment of crisis with her brother having been dead for a few days and in the tomb? When the rubber hits the road, when we see Jesus nailed to the cross, when he see his head crowned with thorns and we see the wounds from the whips on his back and the blood from his brows. Can we believe in him and trust in him in those painful hours? Many couldn't and more didn't as they mocked him. And they laughed and ridiculed at him, saying, let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. If he is truly the Son of God, he trusts in God. Let God deliver him now, if God desires him. After all, he said, I am the Son of God. Little did they know the nails were not what was holding Christ to the cross. It was his love for his creation, 
for you and I. Little did they know that Jesus was being the king of Israel and the king of us all. And this very act of his crucifixion, he was delivering us all from the wrath of God. He was fulfilling his role as the son of God. It becomes hard, if not nearly impossible, to trust people when they do not follow through what they said that they would do. But even though the people at the cross thought that Jesus was a failure who did not live up to his promises, more like they didn't live up to his expectations, because they had the things of man in mind and not the things of God. Jesus was actually following through with what God had promised through him and is recorded all throughout the scriptures, the Old Testament scriptures. At that moment, when Jesus was being crucified on the cross, his glory as the Son of God was being made known and being revealed. He was announcing that he had completed the plan of salvation appointed to him by his Father and our Father to save all people from sin, death, and the devil. Through his sinless life and his innocent suffering and death. As Luther wrote, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness and innocence and blessedness. This is most certainly true as the explanation to the second article of the Apostles' Creed from the small catechism. There is great trust in those words. And the words we speak in our statements of faith, you know them as the Apostles, Nicene, and Athanasian creeds. They could also be called our statements of trust, our complete trust that Jesus finished what he started with his birth in Bethlehem by dying in our stead on the cross just outside the gates of Jerusalem for our sake. The cross, therefore, is a symbol. It's a sign, an indication that we trust in the Lord with all our hearts, our souls, and our minds. The cross reminds us that we do not understand fully, but God does. And he knows what is best for us in the person of Jesus Christ, whom he crucified for our benefit and for his glory. St. Paul is an excellent person to turn to when seeking trustworthy statements because he wrote nearly half of our scriptures inspired by the Holy Spirit. And he said this, amongst many other things. We preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to the Jews and folly to the Gentiles, but those who are called but to those who are called both Jews and Gentiles, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. We put our trust in what we already know to be powerful and wise. Our God in Christ at the cross. We don't, when we don't trust in God, we tend to wander aimlessly like lost sheep, straying about and wasting our lives in the gifts that God has given us. Who knows what direction we go? But when we put our trust in God, in Christ, he makes our path straight and he gives us a clear direction, a clear direction that leads straight to the cross. Only there is truth found. Only there is trust found. Only there is love confidence and forgiveness and mercy revealed. Only there can we find the peace that surpasses all understanding. As those who trust in the Lord, then how are you and I to live in a world full of temptations, in a world full of mistrust, distrust, and misplaced trust? In a world filled of doubt and fear and questions, we as witnesses to the resurrection, should live and do live as the voices of faith and calm, providing the divine answers that come from Christ through his scriptures. We should be the voice of belief in Jesus and the cross. 
as John the Baptist said from his prison cell to his apostles, go and ask Jesus, is he the one to come or should we look for another? In that moment of weak and doubt, and doubt, shortly before he was beheaded for telling Herod that what he did was wrong and marrying his brother's wife. And Jesus said, go and tell John what you see and what you hear. There is no need to look for another. There is security nowhere else because Jesus was the one who is and who was and who will come again. All our future plans can be found at the foot of the cross. So tonight and every night and every day, be guided to the cross. Trust in Jesus and lead others to trust in him. Amen. Now may the peace that surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and minds and keep you in the faith of Christ as we continue with our next hymn. Congregation, will please rise as we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the offering and offertory. Now, at this time, I invite the acolytes and the ushers forward.
As you can see, each petition of our prayers will end with our God and Savior. During this Lenten season, the congregation will respond. Set the cross of Jesus before us to guide us in the way of trust. Let us go before the Lord in prayer. Lord God, in a world where it is hard to know in whom or what we can trust, we place our trust in you. You always keep your promises. Down through the centuries, the prophets announced your promise to send your anointed one, the Messiah. When the time was right, that promise was fulfilled in Jesus, our God and our Savior during this Lenten season. Set the cross of Jesus before us to guide us in the way of trust. Lord God, as Jesus drew near to, to the hour of his death, he trusted in you. Excuse me. His heavenly Father, to guide his steps to the cross, as the scripture had foretold, we place our trust in Jesus alone for our salvation. Bless and guide us as we take up our crosses and follow our Savior, our God and our Savior, during this Lenten season. Set the cross of Jesus before us to guide us in the way of trust. Lord God, help those who are struggling with illness, pain, or grief. Those we name now, Karen and Randy Ritterbush, Neil Ackley, Arvid and Jane Warnke, Melinda Priner, Robin Whitney, and those we name in our hearts. Comfort them with the promise of your word and lead us to the opportunities to serve them in Jesus' name, our God and our Savior during this Lenten season. Set the cross of Jesus before us to guide us in the way of trust. Lord God, help us by your spirit to depend on you each day in all the circumstances of our lives. Teach us not to rely on our own understanding, but to trust in you in all things. We know that you will guide us, our God and our Savior, during this Lenten season. Set the cross of Jesus before us to guide us in the way of trust. Lord God, as we rely on you for help now in this earthly life, we know that we can trust in you for our eternal salvation through faith in Jesus. Our Lord has promised Surely I am coming soon. We look forward to the fulfillment of that promise and to the life in your presence forever, our God and our Savior, during this Lenten season. Our cross is before us to guide us in the way of trust. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.